so between September of 2001 and April of 2003, it was trainer deploy, trainer deploy. Um, and I did a, like a, a professional development course I had to go in between. Like it was extremely busy, man. Like I had no idea. It was like, it was just going from, from 97 to 01, just a constant RS cycle where, you know, train up your R and R for F1. So you're not really doing a lot of outside, um, Fort Benning training. So you're, you're just, uh, sitting in Fort Benning doing local ranges. If you're like right. going to get a gunship kind of Coolidge, that's cool. Um, then you go to a less restrictive cycle and that's just repeated for like years and years and years. And all of a sudden, uh, the war kicks off and then like I don't, I was on it. I definitely was, uh, gone more than I was, uh, home, which was fine. I wasn't married at the time. I didn't have a girlfriend. Sure. Um, I was stupid enough to get a dog. I don't know why I got a dog, <laughs> yeah. but I, I gave it to, a, I gave it to another uh, buddy with the family. Uh, so that worked out for the dog. Nice. Um, so yeah, I was just gone all the time. Um, so yeah, between September 2001, April of 2003, um, my last deployment with the regiment, it was like just deployed gone. Cause so get back January, 2002, JRTC in March, you know, we had, you know, we had leave and then train up for JRTC, JRTC prep for the next deployment. Um, I had to go to BNOC at the time, which uh, it's called something else now, like or leadership course phase two or something yeah, like yeah. that. I don't know, but it's like for the army, it's for like an E6 on professional development. So I had to go to BNOC like in uh, May, June out in Fort Sill. So the company already deployed without me. No, I'll say without me, but the company deployed a couple yeah. of us. I think Josh Thomas, he uh, stayed back too because uh, his wife was pregnant and she okay. gave birth around that time. So there's a few of us like on rear D caught um flights uh a few weeks after the company and then met up with them in Asadabad. so i got to Asadabad june of 2002 we were there through uh september october um that was a fun deployment um yeah, yeah. that's where uh who's with us most of the time um q was in and out of there a lot of guys uh hank house was there okay yep um was Billy there? I think Billy Otter was there. I know Billy did the jump with me with us okay. in our, in uh, in Iraq. Um, but okay. we had, at that time, I think that might have started the process where we had a JZAC with every platoon. Like yeah. every every time a platoon went out the wire, um, there was a JTAC in that patrol. Nice. Yeah. So you guys were just ran ragged. Definitely. Didn't Billy Otter go with us a couple times? Like when we did those rat that rat patrol thing, I thought that he was out there. He he either. He was either with us or he, we met like a, a, a 130 would land out in the middle of the desert and Billy would get off and then we'd do something or I can't, he was there, he was around sometime. I, I just can't remember when it was, but anyway, but yeah, so yeah, yeah so and, that, uh, that's when I met Mark, first met Mark Foster. She was in Sahabad. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not going to rag him now. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was, that was good for me. Um, we were in a Sahabad the entire time up until yeah. we had to drive back to Bath. And then just redeploy from there. It was awesome. It was just our company out there. Um, I guess keep actually, busy I met, I met, I met uh, Master uh, at the time, Master Lundquist out there because we oh, had okay. we had uh, special mission units roll in and out. You know, from there right, right. we had a ODA stay with us for a little bit in Asadabad. Okay. That's where I met Lunk. He was supporting an ODA uh, team right, there. Yep. Um, had an RD team uh, come rolling in and out at that time. I think they were there for the majority of. The time we're there they were there with us too nice. um so that was a fun deployment um that was way more kinetic than the last one for sure really? especially for especially for, you know uh, billy and q and everybody um yeah. and patrols they were yeah it, it was fun like do you have any specific things that uh come to mind at the, at the, um, the, the run together a lot of times yeah. people, um, you, it, when you get after it so much in a certain location it all kind of runs together so it just seems like yeah we were we were running and gunning the whole time but having specific instances or it's kind of hard to come up with, but you know, no, there was you two, yeah. There, uh, just two that um, stick out one, because I, we've, I don't, I, I can say I, and I think all of us on that patrol at that time, we were coming back and none of us have seen for some reason, the road exploded in front of us. We're like, the hell just happened. <laughs> like <laughs> apparently, you know, it, it, you know, it was our first instance with, with, you know, IEDs. Uh, that was right, in right. You know, the summer of 2002. Like we never prepared. I, uh, the only intel we got was because we were running like just gutted um, 
Humvees. We like ditched the RSOs. Right. They weren't applicable at that time. Uh, Humvees. Yeah, the RSOs wouldn't work out there because yeah, the no tires. Yeah, the terrain uh, was too bad. For them. tires, everything. Um, so we're, we're just running gutted up arm uh, plated, anyways. I want to say up armored Humvees. Like the the um, they had you know diamond plating in the back, but we windshields are gone. Like bird cage. I mean, you're yes. just like windshields no are gone. Doors were gone. Um, yeah. No rear. You know, it was it was just an open truck all the yeah. way around. Um, and so, and I remember, you know, uh, any like Intel threats, we updates we get, it was, be, and I assume it's because we were rolling around in those open vehicles. It was like, as you, as you know, they were said, be prepared, you know, as you roll through, uh, like Assad about proper when we got actually got into town, obviously we had to slow down. So we didn't run over everybody. Right. Um, as we we're going through the market, like just eyes up. Cause you know, we got, um, uh, you know, hits of, Maybe they'll try and reach in, either grab a weapon or you yourself and drag you out. So we're eyes up on that. And, but I never recall ever like having intel about IEDs. Just it wasn't right. a thing then. Yep. So we're coming back. Yeah, from like all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah, all of a sudden, like the road just exploded. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, a thing? I didn't, yes. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> um, yeah. We don't have that. So, uh, that, and then it was, so we we're there. Um, it disabled one vehicle, zero injuries. Thank God. I don't know how that happened. Um, uh, but you know, found the command wire and just, there was a town as we're, you know, you're limited to where you can drive out there. Sure. Um, cause I think Sadabad became like fob right or something like that eventually, but it saw it back in the day. It was so very few, um, avenues approach you can go. So, you know, you found, you know, they um, found the command wire that uh, deaded it and ran it to a town down the valley. Um, uh, and I think Sergeant Major Birch was with us for that um, that incident. So he knew what to do, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they get back to base. And then the other one that I recollect was, uh, you know, I, I was still the company of FSNCO at that time. So I had, you know, there were platoon JTACs, there were platoon FOs, there were platoon FO RTOs. So like as a platoon or as a company, FSNCO, I didn't really like, I, we had an FSO at that time, thank God, uh, Russ Ripiso. Um, yep. So he would be with the command element wherever Captain Ryan would go. He'd tag along. I usually was with XO um, with the uh, other CP. Um, and XO didn't really go out that much. So I would, whenever my guys needed a break, um, from going, uh, I was like, Hey man, let me, you, you need a break. Let me go. <laughs> like you don't want to take this spot. Yeah. So luckily I went out, um, I went out with third platoon, uh, with, uh, G and Bostic. Um, and again, we're coming back just as patrol. We're going out to an area just really, it was honestly at those, at that time, man, it was like, uh, patrol, like we were just patrolling, hoping for a contact and then we engaged there were um like H hvts that we would go after at least go down the areas that we knew hopefully we can kick something off if not we at least gather some kind of intel and sure. come back um and the way back of that one um we just um were engaged from across the river um and so for some reason do we have yeah, it was just me. I didn't. So we didn't have an FO, we didn't have an art, uh, the FO out there, Thomas, um, or there wasn't a uh, JTAC at the time either. So it was just me on the patrol. So I was like, sweet. Um, we just took a little bit of gunfire um, from across the river. Um, so I, you know, dismounted, started running up, trying to get my antenna up and everything like that because uh, we were getting classes and you know, just get up on. Uh, I didn't know it was jarn then, but you know, just get up on this freak. Call right, this right. person, see what they can give you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I did that. But uh, like by the time uh, something came over, like it was just sporadic shot. Um, they stopped this. I think that's all they wanted to do. And then, yeah. you know, the 50 cal and the Mark 19 engage. And I think that just made it move on. So I didn't get to do anything then. But just the the pops and the whizzes and the cracks are always, you know. Disconcerting, I know. It's yeah. Like yeah. Uh, it's, it's cool you know you think you're about to do your job and then you don't right that, that, that's um, the bigger letdown than getting shot yeah, like, oh, exactly. yeah, gonna... yeah. the other time um during that deployment um our xo paul karen um he and i were so i told you about this like a, we did our recce mission 
uh, in yeah. downtown Asadabad. So there was um, a target in Asadabad that uh, they needed intel on just of this compound. Like, uh, can a Humvee fit down this alleyway? Um, what does the gate look like? Is the lock on the inside or outside? How high are the walls? Blah, blah, blah. Stuff yeah. I like just seemed like a salute report back in the day, you know? Um, sure. as you're walking, but they were like, well, obviously you can't make it too obvious, um, uh, that, you know, we sent a bunch, you know, we didn't really walk around the town anyways. We always drove through to go to another area. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're like, I don't know whose idea it was, but Paul came up to me, he threw me, uh, a man dress and he's like, Hey man, put this on. You and I are jumping in the Hilux with the two Terps. And we're driving in Asadabad. Oh my like, God. <laughs> Basically, because we're the two like tall, skinny brown guys. Not too right. dark. <laughs> yeah. Right. You guys can fit the profile. Yeah. Yeah. At first, at, yeah. at just a glance, you're yes. good. Yeah. yeah. And uh as long as you don't talk to anybody or anything. No, no, definitely not. Uh so I was like, what do I do? He goes, just hold my hand while we're walking. That's what they do. I was like, okay. I was like, how do I hide my M4? He goes, No, we're not taking an M4, just take your M9. I was like, with my holster he goes no if you just wear here's some 550 and tie it around your waist you know i was like oh my god this is so stupid i'm gonna die <laughs> i'm gonna die uh but it, i mean it just it went without um incident we rolled down with the um the terps and then uh you know parked away from where we were walking walk wow. through uh god it was i felt trying to be nonchalant but like how do you do that oh my god I bet, you know you you think it's it's cool but it's yeah. also like man i get smoked any time right now you know or just yeah. get rolled up yeah. or you know like I, my I'm, head cut off on cnn or what and, and like i'm walking like, i've never walked with my uh, you know uh because all i had was 550 tied around my waist and snugly so my beretta could fit, you know get in there but i knew like if i walk at my normal pace it's going to either slip out or something so i like i'm trying to shuffle but not look like it, it was just it was a yeah it was just, yeah it was it was funny <laughs> but after the fact but yeah yeah isn't it, yeah but, none of that stuff that were funny at the time but yeah after, yeah exactly. yeah <laughs> and it was, the worst part was like he got he got the cool he got the shepherd's hat like oh yeah national hat and i had like the little square cap probably meant like oh, i was okay. a schoolboy or something like that so it was i'll send you the picture man it was funny i want to see it <laughs> so that went without and then you know we came back talked to captain ryan and gave him the info and the hit never ended up happening there's a there's a lot of potentials um during that deployment some panned out some didn't yeah um but it was still like just the constant patrols are going on um not all saw action all gone engaged but more often than not they did and the actual assault about itself too like one night we uh, came under attack um and that night like i want to say it was billy that was working uh a10s on the ridge line like to the uh, the rivers to the south to the north of us um yeah so that was cool but, well, they like shooting rockets uh at the base yeah this uh shot rockets uh <laughs> the whole time up until this night um you know Daytime activities as normal at night, headlamps, red light or nothing. Um, there was, uh, you know, a curtain over the cop or over the CP. So you even walked in, you know, you, the uh, light wouldn't shine out in the, um, into the courtyard area. So, sure. but for this night, he's that uh, he decided like, for some reason we can have a barbecue. And so there was like, <laughs> so the cooks were like cooking up hot dogs and steak and it was the first like non emery meal we've had in a while um it was after the fourth so maybe that was the wheel because we didn't really get to celebrate the fourth um you know and there was like one or two not full of spotlights um but you know just outdoor lights that we had so the coast can see what they were doing and guys can shuffle through and grab their food and you just let your guard down for you know five minutes and that happens so, yeah, yeah. And two rockets right oh, so look if yeah if they aimed any better because we were all around the cp um there's yeah as soon as and they were airburst like as soon as we heard the whistle like it was like trays were getting flipped guys were hitting the ground <laughs> <laughs> but i was talking to, i think chuck everett afterwards he's like man i saw your plate hit i was like i reached over to try your safer hot dog <laughs> he's, like, yeah. he's like i'm not letting that thing go <laughs> because you're a fool to drop your plate uh, <laughs> 
You're like, you know, yeah. where to the bunker. Or you yeah. to get your shit. Like, I'm not gonna let this go to waste. But yeah, it's, and that's the thing too. Like after that happened, we're you know just range panties and brown t-shirts and boots, and guys just grabbed body armor, threw it on, got in the trucks, rolled in the town, um, and brought some people back to um, uh, that stayed. You know that later shipped off the bath. I think so. Yeah, it was. It was that was another yeah another cool thing to happen. I guess. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny how you uh, once you you get that false sense of security sometimes uh, just because you're there for so like it's I don't know what you call it. I, there's a name for it, but you just get day in and day out. It's the same thing and nothing happens and you get your used to it. And then when something and then <coughs> when something does happen, it's like very catastrophic because you're not yeah. you just haven't been ready for it. Yeah. But well, I'm glad nobody got hurt. I mean, that's yeah. Yeah. During that deployment, uh, like the biggest uh I know some of the guys at Mark I talked about it too. Like malaria just hit the company hard. Yeah. Like dudes were one guy came back, didn't know he had it, um, went to pre-ranger after deployment. Um, and in pre-ranger was like during the I think five mile run or twelve mile rock, was just he was just like powering his his way through it. Like he's like, I am not not going through pre-ranger and not not going through range school. To the point where he passed out and i think he had kidney issues for the rest of his career because like he didn't know he had malaria like he was and he thought he just had the flu he's like that's cool i can you know whatever it's a flu um hank house got super sick while we're out there oh did he um yeah uh a bunch of guys got sick out there and yeah, and, that's and post appointment too actually i think post appointment was worse because it was hitting guys um it hit me after iraq um so almost a year after we got back uh just yeah so you think so you got hit with you think you got hit with malaria while in afghanistan rotated back deployed to iraq and then it it took that long to kind of get through your system yeah because i don't remember being um outside of like uh well like we'll get to it later but like when i when when alf company finally got to the dam after you know everything beacon went through um i was able we were able to finally wash ourselves and it was in Haditha Dam, which was cool, but oh, yeah. um, but just the way from the Asadabad deployment, like the SF team that was there, uh, before them, we were just showering with water bottles um, when we could, or it, I think it only rained once or twice while we were there. Um, yeah. And so if it rained and we happened to be on Asadabad, we were, you know, just ran out and lathered up real quick and rinsed off in the rain. Um, but the, the engineer, uh, I think gave us like right behind our, I don't want to call them tents. They were like old canopies that we propped up with uh, posts. So it was like an open, open tent living area, just cots under a tarp really. And behind us, the uh, engineer dude, he set up like four shower heads for us. He ran, he helped the locals run wire or wire water and everything like that. So it was really just like gravity fed water. Uh-huh. Um, but so we were like, cool, we got showers. Um, but like, I didn't see myself, but the story was like guys were patrolling, running down um, on patrol, leaving the gate, uh, went up, drive towards Asadabad, and that's where the water would come from. And they were like, they thought it was a rock uh, in the stream, but for some reason, somebody, somebody went up and looked at it. It was like, is a dead bloated donkey? Oh, that man. just like lost all his. <laughs> so oh, that was feeding into the shower. So to me, I can put two and two together and realize how yeah, guys. Are saying, I don't know. Man, you're lucky. That's all you guys got. I mean, yeah, you I know. anything. Oh. Yeah. So that was that. Um. So yeah, that was uh, that was that was that that was a fun deployment though. As yeah. definitely higher pace than the first deployment. Way higher paced. For sure. Um. Not as you know, connect as everybody hoped it would be, you know, but yeah. still it was, it was starting to progress that way as, as you know, as stupid as that sounds like people were starting to, I mean, that's what you do. You want to get in the fight. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, it well, was you're starting there for a jo- you're there to do a job. Yeah. We're not there to, and, you know, it's frustrating when you're, you, you keep going out, you keep going out and there's no, you don't, you're, there's no result. There's no, yeah. you, know, you want that, uh, yeah. You want some sort of end state. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So that's why I think so that night we got rocketed because of the barbecue. Um, when guys rolled out to that town, they were super aggressive. Um, oh, bet. <laughs> yeah. when they rolled and they brought the guys back, there was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was good. 
How dare yeah, they interrupt that barbecue? Don't they know yeah, they're yeah. Americans? Yeah. <laughs> barbecue sacred. <laughs> All right. So that was, was that your last um, OEF deployment before Iraq? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For third battalion, it was. Um, so we got back um, in September, uh, early October of 2002. Went on leave, came back. And then like the rumblings of uh, Iraq started, you know, happening. Um, since we had leave after deployment, we didn't get leave over Christmas. We all stayed around. We pretty much started, it almost seemed inevitable, inevitable just started prepping for Iraq, honestly. Yeah. Um, it spent, and it got in full swing in January, especially I remember watching in Sergeant G's office, like watching Colin Powell at the UN, you know, bring out the vials. And we're like, all right, well, man. So it, yeah. it was like full on uh, prepping for uh, um, Iraq at that point. And then, uh, so Colonel Bannock was a third battalion commander. I don't know why uh, we always got the jumps um, or why we jumped. Sometimes you, you wonder like, was yeah, the like jump, who, was the jump, are, are all these jumps necessary? Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, right. So, but uh, we're, you know, tagged in for new, we were jumping in. Um, so we did a lot of, it's kind of like, you know, like the Somalia guys, like they knew it was happening. It was just a matter of when, and before right. they even left for Somalia, they were doing all sorts of projects. Like they go out to Fort Hood to mock-ups and train there. They, you know, sure, back sure. in Benning. So that's kind of where it was. Like we would just like, I remember, you know, yeah, it was man, like walk through dry run, dry yeah. night. So that's what it was for day live, night live. Yes, yeah. So I remember we they set up a mock up over by Fryer. It wasn't on Fryer. It was like a small strip outside of Fryer Field, um, and we literally just walked through phase by phase, piece by piece of the jump uh, into Iraq, which would eventually be H one. Um, you know, they had the engineer tape out. Uh, yeah, yeah. At, you know, this phase, you know, I'll, you know, these are the assets. This is the task conditions. Like. Well, but that's what we did. Like we walked through step by step as we would with an MLAT, you know, it wasn't any different, which is the whole point of, you know, like an MLAT is feels like that because that is what we're doing. Guess what? That is what we did. So it was, yeah, you know, what, yeah. We say like, you know, Rhino was like an MLAT. This was like an MLAT. It's like, that's, that's the whole point. That's why we do yeah. this stuff because it, we, if, that way, when you get there, it's not new. It's yeah, like, now what exactly. do we do? It's like, no, I know what to do. I know exactly, you know, I know go over here and I link up here and I do this. Yep. Yeah. 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 We get second nature kind of. Yep. Yep. So I remember we do that in January, February, uh, or really January of 03. And then for like the live walkthrough, we jumped into uh, Holland, DZ, uh, okay. on Fort Bragg. It's a huge one out in the yeah. western uh, part of the, the Fort Bragg ranges. Um, so, yeah, we jumped to Holland um, and then just, you know, did that. We're there. For, honestly, um, it wasn't MLAT ish. It was just jump, assemble. Um, and then, because we, on the actual jump, we had engineers with us from 82nd, had an engineer company with uh, heavy equipment. Um, we eventually had like a uh, Navy EOD with us. Um, so that jump with us. So we just, it was really just bringing all the pieces together do an actual jump, see if it all would work out. And then, uh, so I was still company F Sensio at the time. Uh, Paul Karen was still the XO. Captain Ryan was still the commander and Russ, uh, was still the FSO. And remember, uh, while we were waiting on Holland, um, we were running piece by piece through everything. Uh, Paul Karen, his dad, um, I don't know if you knew this, like his dad was Star major of uh, the unit. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, I guess I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but at this time, his dad had a retired, and is that actually you know what? His dad was actually a guest speaker, like before he retired at one of our Ranger balls. Oh and yeah. Like, and if you look at him, he's the most unassuming dude. You like no Ranger tab, no SF long tab. Um, obviously, you know he's uh, airborne, free fall, everything. Um. But just an unassuming new small, not not, not a big friend guy. Well, Paul, I guess Paul's not he's yeah. unassuming as well. I mean, he was a yeah. kind of smaller dude. So he's given it, you know, he's he's the guest speaker at one of our range balls. And I don't think and he was a soft spoken guy as well. And I don't think anybody actually knew like like 
paid either paid attention or knew like how badass this guy was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is even more badass than a regular yeah. badass. So while we're on Holland, um, Paul goes, Hey man, uh, why don't you come with me? Um, are you hungry? I was like, yeah, I'm hungry. Uh, he goes, come with me. And then, so we started walking away from the CP and to the edge of the, um, to the edge of Holland, there's like a little mount complex there. Yeah. Um, and there's this little, like, I don't know, it was a Nissan or Ford or for a Nissan or Tacoma, like small ones, you know, not like a, um, not an extra cab or just single cab Tacoma, not even a four by four, just a two wheel, two wheel yeah. drive. Yeah. Um, and he goes, oh, come on, let's get in. He goes, this is my dad. Uh, he was like, his dad at that time was like the, like the safety guy over there, you know, still yeah. working over there. But, uh, so his dad drove us onto the compound and then like brought us to the chow hall while we're really? in, while we're in J list and our, you know, our, <laughs> Our pro mass is flopping at our side. <laughs> yeah, he got his chow and that's awesome. Brought, brought me and uh, Paul back to the DZ after that, and then I think that night or early the next morning, we you know uh, uh, broke down and then loaded up and headed back to Benning. So it was pretty funny. That's awesome. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I was I was I was obviously like a total fish out of water. I had no idea what like I'm gonna get like either yelled at because I'm here. Or like people are looking at me like I'm crazy. They were all cool. Yeah, they just sat down talking. So amazing. It, it, yeah, I have very, very, a very small uh, interaction, a very small exposure to it. But it's from what I have seen and what I've been, you know, done there. It's just amazing. It's like the yeah. coolest place. I mean, and I can imagine why people would want to go there and work. You know, that's yeah. a, oh, it seems like a, a phenomenal place to be. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was it. That was super interesting. And then. uh like I said, uh, back to reality. We got back, you know, back to Benning. And then just um, when we deployed, uh, we were lucky enough to not go to, I think because Alpha Company as a whole was at Asadabad, while the rest of the battalion at that time was at Bath, living, I won't say well, but living better than open air tarps and, you know, cots right. um, and shit water. So, uh, yeah. I was, Back in the too, just like just even not even thinking about it, like it, totally normal. Like uh, our latrine, open air, diesel cans with plywood, and uh, you know just a toilet seat, even you know cut out and then toilet seat placed on it. It was like nothing. Yeah, uh, but just thinking about it, it's like how you know it's like it, I'm it was, telling you, man, the, the early days home. of that invade that of the war. If you were at an outstation, you were not, you were sucking. I mean, you yeah. were not living well. I mean, I used to, I spent some time at Shkin and, um, you know, at uh, you know, like Organy or any of those places. Mm -hmm. It was like that. It was like, you had, to, you had to just figure it out. You had to like, you know. Burn your own, burn your own crap. You know, that's it. That was, yeah, that, was it a, was, that was a daily detail. Like, so, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, I mean, it just had to be done. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, terrible living conditions. so I, I think the, um, because Alpha Company was out there. The, the entirety of that second deployment um, prior, you know, we um, got to stay on PSAB, uh, Prince Sultan Air Base, I believe it was called. Okay. Uh, uh, and while the rest of the time was like at some austere place, like oh, just really? I heard it was horrible, like <laughs> the winds, the sand, it was horrible. So we were living oh. fairly large prior to the jump. I will say nice. like for what it was, I remember Billy getting, and Trent Joy was with us then too. Um, oh, okay. I'm done with the suit. Uh, Billy somehow getting hands on like an up armored like caddy or something like that. I think it was just, and we, he'd take us to the jowl once in a while. <laughs> but I think it was just like a hoopty that was just like heavy. It was like dropped to the ground. So it was so, yeah. <laughs> and the, and the glass and everything. And so it was funny. Um, yeah. So uh, we were lucky enough to be there. Um, and again, it felt like we were there for weeks, just either. Refining planning or scrapping, planning for something bigger, which didn't happen. Thank God, like the actual jump onto uh, 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 Baghdad International never happened. Thank God. But that was a plan that was going forward. That was going to be a red metal plus jump. Um, Don't you that, think that would have been brutal? Uh, that oh, seems like it would have been like just kind of a lot of maybe alone going into like that would have been. I Yeah. Yeah. I. I the th like they say, you know, like the acceptable casualty rate is like 30% or something like that. Just, you know, hearing that alone, it's like, holy. Yeah. 
And you definitely probably, probably, like, probably would have sustained that. Oh, easily. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And probably why you didn't do it, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I was I, like Band of Brothers is one of my favorite series ever. Um, just knowing even they probably even have worse um, casualty percentages uh, going into what they did. And I was like, man, there's obviously I, yeah, never will ever compare to anything like that. But that's what, but uh, that's kind of like not to, not to say that we. But it, it makes me think like I don't know. It, it was obviously if we were told to do it, I mean, like we had, we would we would do it. Sure. Um, but like is the just the way even you know twenty it's been twenty years now. Like is do people not want to see that? You know, like yeah, that I many. Mean, well, I would venture to say that even when they did it back in you know, world war two, it yeah. probably wasn't necessary to take that kind of risk. They were probably yeah. just like, we're, we need to do this. Mass force. Like like doing it. Yeah. 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 They were, they, they didn't take any consideration soldiers lives as much as we do now, which yeah. so that's, you know, so that yes, those guys are heroes and I, uh, you know, I have the utmost respect for them, but their leadership at the time probably wasn't, didn't have their best interest in mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, Whereas we, when we were there, we were, we had the luxury of having guys that were, they were hard chargers, but they were also like, look, I don't want to get a bunch of Rangers killed either. Or I don't want to yeah. get them. You know, so they were like, let's, they had to temper the plan to be like, yes, we're going to kick, kick ass, but we also want to keep our guys alive. So, you know, they had to, which is how, it, you know, the, the H1 thing probably came to fruition. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think that was the plan always. So they obviously buy up scale down back to the originality. So H1 was going on. Um, I uh, Was it Seiko or Biko was hitting, not simultaneous, but around the, you know, it was going to be another jump with, I believe, Charlie Company again or Bravo Company um, on the H3. Um, but yeah, ALF Company plus an 82nd Engineer Company plus um, a team of Navy EOD dudes. Um and then other strap hangers, you know, uh, but, uh, so yeah, so the jump into Iraq, um, yeah, uh, we we're lucky enough to be, again, it was just like planning for weeks. Um, when it finally happened, um, the ruck was a lot heavier cause we weren't coming back to where we were. Oh, we were yeah. in the new country for all. It was a heavy ass rock man. Right. Luckily, um, it yeah, was, what was the plan? I mean, if you can go into it, like what, yes. what was it to, set up that airstrip or was it to yeah, I mean, it was uh it? so we it was a strategic uh airfield for us and iraq so they were going to and they already did um uh put barriers on the airfield so they um either vehicles that would you know park on the airfield pop the tires they would dump uh sand piles or rock piles on the airfield that's why we had the engineers come with us okay. So we knew we wanted to hold the airfield um, f- to make it as a, obviously, you know, you had the mechanized force just kicking ass, going, driving balls to the wall into um, Baghdad and H1, H3, everything was kind of out to the West. So that was going to be a, a, there really wasn't much out there um, for, to sustain. So if we took that airfield, it could be a leapfrog point, it, you know, we jump right. secure the airfield. We can run missions out of there, but also like um, they can we can bring sustain in there as well. Oh, fuel, okay. Okay. Uh, fuel, everything like that. It become a just a mini hub um, to come from another area, refuel, rearm if they want to make it a farp as well, and then go to other places in Iraq. Gotcha. So I think that was a big like the big picture. Okay. <clears throat> Did you guys um, um, meet any resistance there, or did, was it? No, absolutely. Nope. Uh, uh, at least for H now zero. Yeah. yeah, it was just it was just um the all the runways that either they either dug holes in them or they put some kind of barrier in them. So the engineers were super busy. The jump yeah. itself was fine. Um, the same thing. Like I just didn't track. We were jumping lower than usual. Um, <laughs> I hit my knees like super bad. Um, did you land on the um on the runway or did you land off? No, I landed off. Thank God. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then assembled, uh, like we just held security around the airfield, honestly, for like days, um, before the engineers could finally have it hundred percent cleared. Um, the CCT was able to do their, uh, runway assessments. Oh, okay. Um, and then things are start flowing in like, uh, um, right wing acid started flowing in. 
um, so they can run missions with their customers. Um, we actually had a few A-10s, remember, come uh, fly in, probably plan with uh, those Oh, other they landed there. Yeah, they landed. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I have the worst war story. Sorry, man. I know this is... <laughs> no, no, no. This is awesome. I the, the fact... That's what I love about, like, kind of what we do. Not We, uh, the collective, we, like, uh, the U.S., like we're like we're, we're gonna you know we have the assets we have the means we have the talent to set up something like that in the middle of nowhere, you know, and bring in anything we want. Bring, we're bringing like attack fighter jets into the this austere remote you know remote location, um, resupplies and helicopters. I mean, it's just a it's a phenomenal um, indication of what we can do. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's I think it's awesome. So then, how long did you guys stay at H one? Uh, the jump itself was, yeah, uneventful, um, started planning things to do, um, or future emissions. Uh, honestly, like the whole time we knew the rest of the battalion was out there. Um, I remember Biko rolling through to go to the dam. I didn't know the significance of it at the time because, uh, uh, like we had, a, a, while the dam was going on, um, we were kind of uh, doing some rap patrols as well. Uh, we just have companies come out. Uh, we, we stage out of H1, um, and then we take platoon, the com uh, company commander would just task platoons to go out um, for patrols. Then just one night, uh, we went forward to like an oil refinery. Um, and it had like almost a whole company out there at one time uh really i think while we we're out there we uh it was kind of cool I, I had no idea like they had like a, a little town associated like almost like the ore finding workers would work in this little town so we had to clear through there and then onto the ore finding actual we just i think we just sh shut the oil off honestly okay. make sure that it couldn't be used as because i remember captain ryan going he's like hey cool we just cut the oil off to syria and he kind of Around, I was like, "Is that is that just is that real?" <laughs> yeah, we just did that. Uh, yeah, we were supposed to do that. I guess number one, we were supposed to do that. <laughs> so at that point, we we're amassed, and and I lived the company was in a smaller area. So he sent two platoons back to H one. One platoon stayed out by the ore refinery, and they were doing patrols from there. Um, so I think uh, at that time it was second platoon and the company CP, so Captain Ryan and Russ, uh, the episode. Um, and then that's where they had the incident where it was April 3rd. Um, so just after the fight of the dam or during the fight of the dam, um, we, they were setting up um, block musicians along a road. And then Russ with the company CP was just up a little bit higher on higher ground. Um, and the platoon had block musicians uh, down on each side of the road, east and west, I think. Um, and then they were letting cars through, but like they weren't, uh, they'd stop just random ones. Um, this one car rolled through one of the uh, block musicians and then stopped in between the two. And then uh, like a pregnant lady, well, we assumed it was pregnant. She was pregnant lady. She had, um, but this lady came out, started like, waving frantically looking as everybody just assumed she needed help. So, uh, since they were away from block positions closer to the company CP, Russ grabbed two other guys, uh, Nino and Ryan and, uh, just walked down to see, you know, he's like, cool. They made it through the block position. Shouldn't be a problem. Um, walked down there. Like, I don't know if she detonated herself and then there was like a sympathetic in the car or the car detonated. And, but, that happened. So, and then started getting engaged from uh, further down the road. So it was, it was definitely a coordinated attack. Okay. Um, so that was like the kind of the initiation of the amb ambush. Yeah. Yeah. It was a yeah, huge, I was a, yeah. Um, so he's already engaged. Um, had to, I think uh, Billy was out there. So he brought in aircraft. Um, the gun trucks were engaging. Uh, and then once everything calmed, like no force came up. I think they were just trying to like cause a disruption, see what kind of mayhem they can do. And then, you know, um, just cause destruction and, and then, you know, make us uh, uh, deal with it after, which we did. Yeah. And then uh, 
So you know, had to bring in uh, flights from H1 to pick up uh, um, the remains. And then at that point, we switched out platoons because um, there were a couple casualties. Um, honestly, like my another FO, one of my FOs, um, who's uh, Russ's, who's Russ's FS uh, RTO, was playing his uh, RTO. Um, he got caught in the blast, um, seriously wounded. Uh, shrapnel just embedded in his abdomen, you know. Um, but he was lucky, obviously, you know, uh, landed, you know, got eventually shipped to Germany. They, um, uh, were able to uh, save him and everything. But they said, This is what he said. I don't know if he's just saying it to, you know, that, you know, self defamation, you know, to make everything, you know, make it feel seem like he's not, uh, a big deal. He is because he survived a, a hellish thing. Yeah. Um, but he's like, yeah, man, because because at the time it was it was a few weeks in, and we were still eating MREs. And he goes, the doctor said the only thing that saved me is because I was so impacted from, these, you know, I couldn't shit, and I was so impacted, like all that shit that wouldn't go through me. <laughs> what? <laughs> My view is serious. That is, it's wow. so lovely. Yeah. So he was he was messing. He's a he. I think he's retiring this year. He uh, eventually um, he was in rehab for the longest time. He had really. Yeah some really bad um, abdominal issues, um, but was able to uh, stick, uh, stick out his military, like, military career. So that was good for him. Yeah. It's always nice when like guys that, that, that sustain like kind of a serious injury, they, the military is good about keeping them in, especially like, yeah. you know, in the soft community, you know? Yeah. I remember, I can't remember if it was when, if we, do you remember, I thought it was when we first got over there, but we, there was like a seal walking around with like a fake leg. Do you remember, do you remember that we're in the mess hall at some place? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you weren't there, but yeah. I just remember looking over and this dude was like, he like he had glasses on, head on backwards, beard, and he had like shorts on and then like he had like one leg and he was like just, you know, going on missions and doing stuff. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world, you know, like yeah. the, most guys, most humans, once you sustain that kind of an injury or even that kind of trauma, you're like, all right, that's it. I'm done, yeah. you know, but yeah. these, they're like guys like you're talking about, guys like I saw in multitude of other dudes were just like, yeah, I'm getting, I got to get back into it. And they were, I mean, it's really commendable when they, oh, yeah. yeah, just, yeah. Especially throughout the entirety of the war, like the guys that wanted to come back and that it, yeah, it's amazing. Like yeah. most of us would like, yeah, most normal people, I suppose would say, okay, I, I did my part, but yeah. you know, there's something that, and, but, uh, and, to their def- to, and in their, and defense, they, did. they, they absolutely did. did. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that either. I'm not, <laughs> I don't mean to say that, you know, there's anything wrong with a guy who said, uh, that's it, I'm tapping out. Because that's, a, I mean, I don't know how I would react. I never got injured like that. So yeah. I can't speak to either either side. But yeah, it's, I I support the people that say, that tap out and like, that's enough. Getting blown up is enough for me. Yeah. Or losing a limb or an eye or whatever. And then, but I'm also like, I, I hold these other guys in pretty high regard that are like staying in and doing, yeah. you know. Got like Mark Hurst who lost his eye and he's like, yeah. Yeah. Ended up being a JTAC again and, and jumping and, you know, just in being a, you know, a senior leader in the career field, you know, just amazing guys like that. 